Okay, first of all, thank you for tuning in on my talk. Um, as you don't already said, it's a different talk. It's a story not about technology, but about someone who loves technology and moved into more of a manager role. Um, so I'm an autodidact and I'm a founder. I um, started a few companies. I sold two of them indeed. And um, But first of all, I'm a dad. I'm a dad of a two-year-old son. I'm a husband and I'm a techie. And I put techie first because I do have a technical heart. I like technology. I like to play around with it, um, even though I'm mostly involved in yeah, more managerial stuff right now, but uh, I still am a techie at heart. I'm also an entrepreneur. Um, I started a few startups and I'm a maker in my spare time. I like to uh, build things from wood. Um, and I work as a director at Skyworks, which is a small cloud consultancy based in the Netherlands. So let's open up. I never did a talk about myself. I mainly talked about technology and not about me. So that makes it a bit more personal talk and it makes me a bit more nervous than normally because if you just have a technical subject that you master, um, it's easy to talk about it. And if you have something to share uh, about yourself, it's, it's more difficult for me. But I did submit my abstract and it got accepted. Um, so crap, I had to create a talk of it. That's also maybe a good introduction. Um, I believe that stepping out there and just filing an abstract and waiting for it to accept to be accepted is a good way to actually get on stage, to actually speak in public and uh, yeah, to be vulnerable, but also to learn uh, how to share your story. So here we go. But first, let me share my setup. Um, I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't know what to talk about this, but I thought like it's nice to share this story. And as you can see, this was in the morning when I didn't shave myself and didn't put on a shirt. But uh, yeah, it's weird to talk in front of a camera as everyone uh, will experience. But yeah, let's go nevertheless. Let's start with my personal journey. Let's start with my study. This is me, by the way, drinking a beer. Um, and as you might see, I didn't really fit into the whole yeah, student thing. Um, I did like the, the, the student party and the fraternity stuff, but I wasn't a good student. And that was already when I was young. When I was young, I played piano, but I didn't like it. And why not? It was because I had to reproduce what was written in a book and reproduce it in the same way as was writ written. And the same way with studying. I mean, you learn something from a book, you have a test, you need to reproduce it. And that's just not my way of learning. So later on, I switched to drumming. I was able to improvise. I was able to create my own rhythm and to play around uh, with, with my drumsticks. And um, it's, it's much more free instrument to play if you master it. So let's move into the area. What did people expect from me? Well, when I was young, people expected me to graduate from high school, to choose a university, a study direction, to get a degree and then find a well-paid job which is nice. I mean, everyone wants that. And I know that a lot of people don't get the opportunity to even study, but still uh, it didn't work out for me because what I did, I joined a student fraternity. Um, I dropped out of university two times. And in my spare time, I played a lot with Linux. I uh, was working with VPSs, hosting. Uh, I started a hosting company. And in the end, I said, okay, let's stop with this study because it doesn't work for me. Let's just find a job that pays enough, but uh, I'll go from there. So it's kind of like I wanted to jump, but I failed. And, and I also felt like that. But I learned a lot. Um, first of all, I discovered my passion. I discovered that I like to work with Linux. I like to work with uh, distributed systems. Uh, uh, play around in the console. People were asking me all the time, what's that dark box on your screen? What are you doing? And I was like building a, I don't know, a voice controls uh, fax machine uh, that was uh, on our attic 
and listened to incoming numbers and responded with a text-to-speech engine uh, telling me the IP address out loud. So I really liked to play around with that. And next to that, I also like to be an entrepreneur. Um, when I was young, at 16, I had a small web design company. I got some customers, but it didn't really break through. Um, but at least I know, knew what it was to have a company and to earn your own money. Next thing I learned was uh, my own way of learning. I learn by doing. I don't learn by reproducing. Um, I just download a tool, go play with it, and figure things out myself. And when I'm stuck, yes, I will ask for help or I will look into the manual, but I learn by doing. And last, and maybe the most important thing I've learned was that I live up to my own expectations, not someone else. Um, you might have family who has certain expectations from you or, or people around you, but in the end, you have to make your own life. You have to make your own choices. And that's, I think, the main, the, the biggest reason that I learned uh, while studying. So let's fast forward a bit. Um, after my study, I worked as a Linux engineer and as an account manager. So I did both entrepreneurship, sales kind of thing, and uh, Linux at the same time. Um, but then a former colleague of mine uh, said to me, hey, I have a great idea for a startup. So we started a company called 30 Loops. And what we want to do is um, we wanted to create a Heroku-like platform for Python applications. So you have your code, you just do a git push, and then on the back, um, it will build your application, deploy it somewhere, and you can ramp them up by uh, adjusting a slider or by automatically uh, setting like, okay, I have a minimum of two instances and a maximum of 10, like an EC2 autoscaling group. Um, but back then there wasn't really an API available. AWS was not really used in the Netherlands yet. And uh, we built the whole thing based on OpenStack, Django, and, and yeah, a few other tools. My role was parts infrastructure DevOps kind of thing, but also um, trying to sell the platform, trying to get users and uh, yeah, just making the startup work. But we fell into the usual pitfalls. Um, we believe that if we build a good project, product, people will buy it. But guess what? That's not true. A product needs to be sold. Back then it was a bit easier than nowadays because nowadays um, if you look at Hacker News, you see new products coming up every day and new tools uh, getting invented for anything you want. Uh, Google a note-taking tool and you probably end up with hundreds of them. But back then um, you could still get some traction with just a good product, but still you need to sell it. And also a startup is kind of an emotional roller coaster. Um, in the beginning, you have a lot of energy and you want to build the stuff, but then you discover, oh, there's so much stuff to build and it's not going good. And we need to yeah, better define our scope and, and, and come up with more clever solutions. And yes, we can only go live if we actually have this certain feature, which is not true, of course. Um, but it's, it's a roller coaster emotionally, but also financially and, and yeah, um, energy wise. So at the end, we were pretty exhausted uh, of the whole story. Um, but that was the moment that I wanted to pitch it for Startup Bootcamp. We got accepted. But at that moment, uh, things weren't going well. So after two years, the results were pretty dramatic. Um, we had no paying customers. We had 25K in debt. And my co-founder was burned out. Um, and I never got in contact with him anymore after since. So it, it was a, yeah, a bit of a tough ride. But I did learn a lot again. First of all, I've taught myself to code. Um, I know that a lot of engineers uh, who work in infrastructure uh, write a lot of best scripts, but from my own experience, writing best scripts and being proficient in Python, being able to write object-oriented applications is something different. And that's the main thing I've learned on a technical level. I've also learned that less money leads to more creativity and leads to a better sense of urgency. Because you don't have any money left, you will get out there. You will 
try to wing it, try to get those customers on board, uh, make sacrifices, uh, and do crazy stuff. Um, I remember at one point we were in a conference and, and handing out flyers, and we even put those flyers on the stands of competitors to actually get more uh, customers. That's the kind of thing that you do when when money is running low and you really have to, yeah, have to get traction. But also working alone for two years made me a bit anxious socially. When I was in groups, I didn't feel comfortable anymore because I worked from my uh, from my room every day. Uh, my co-founder lived in Berlin back then, so everything was online. A bit similar to how things are right now. Um, but doing that for two years is exhausting. So I'm really curious how we will feel uh, at the end of next year, because it's, I think, kind of a similar uh, way of uh, yeah, working. And money was a good thing. A lack of money is a good thing, at least, but also increases fear and anxiety. So the moment you're not getting any money in and you're approaching a deadline and, and a choice whether or not to continue, um, you you'll you you stop feeling good and you stop sleeping well and and it's it's difficult it's a, a hell of a ride so it was time for me to make some money um 25k in debt a co-founder who didn't uh, work anymore on the product so a uh, time to repay that and that's when i moved into consultancy i joined a company here in the netherlands called xibia um, and the photo you see here is me interviewing Mitchell Hashimoto, the founder of HashiCorp. Um, and thinking about that, that was one of the toughest things I've had to do because I was interviewing someone I looked up to uh, in a different language and trying to have a conversation where he goes a completely different direction than my questions were based on. So it was really hard, but really cool to do. Um, we organized a whole day around Mitsuo Hashimoto back then. Um, and when I joined Xibia, I wanted to work with Docker and Linux because that was where my strengths lie. But instead, my first assignment was to automate a company which was exclusively using uh, Microsoft. We even could, couldn't put a puppet server in there because I didn't want any Linux. But sometimes you don't have a choice. You just go with it and, and you accept how things are. Um, and what I also discovered that was quite a prestigious project. So I was just thrown into the deep. And what I felt like was that a lot of my colleagues were smarter than me. I felt like I didn't finish my study. Uh, I failed at the startup. So I was like, yes, they accepted me for this role, but still I, I don't feel like I deserve it or I'm good enough for this. So. And a lot of people struggle with that, especially highly educated people who are uh, yeah, stretching. It's called the imposter syndrome. Most of you probably have heard of it, but it's quite common. And what I later on realized was that probably all my colleagues thought the same of me. They also felt uh, surrounded by smart colleagues. And um, realizing that helped me, yeah, not, not fighting it, but accepting it, accepting that it's just a fact of life that you have this feeling. And later on, I even realized that feeling like an imposter means that I'm stretching. If I don't feel like an imposter, um, I am in my comfort zone. I feel fine just where I'm at. I don't stretch to new things. I don't stretch to new challenges. And um, so if you feel like an imposter, it's probably a good thing. So I would encourage everyone to embrace your inner imposter and use it as a compass. If you feel like, oh, you're, co you're comfortable again, but you have ambitions to, uh, to grow personally wise, but professionally also, um, it might be good to use it as a compass and to say like, okay, do I feel as an imposter right now? If not, uh, maybe it's time for me to um, share my ambitions and to go for that uh, promotion or, or other role that I'm pursuing. So, as a consultant, what I did was I worked on various projects. Um, I helped uh, companies like Wacomp, uh, Stater, uh, yeah, quite a few big companies in the Netherlands uh, adopting cloud technology. Uh, but next to that, um, within Xibia, I also organized several events. Um, I helped starting a new business unit, mainly focused on clouds. And uh, the last two years, I worked on a learning platform called Instruct 
where you can learn things by doing, which also comes back to my personal uh, idea of learning. Um, instead of doing the Hello World tutorials, you got a uh, working Kubernetes cluster, for example, which was broken and you had to fix it. And the system would give you feedback whether you did it correctly or not. So it was closely tied to my personal ambitions and my personal way of learning. And I really liked that. Um, and that's also where I discovered my um, yeah, ambition to become more of a manager and help people grow instead of growing my own uh, technical side. So, as I said, we organized several events. Um, this was uh, one of the events Xibia did, did back then um, with Mitchell Hashimoto on stage. Um, Cargonauts was one of the initiatives we had back then, uh, which focused on container infrastructure. Um, and that was what I liked. I liked starting new initiatives, getting energy and getting people behind an idea, behind a identity. Um, later on at Instruct, uh, we thought like, okay, what is a good way to actually uh, be on conferences while not being there or um, having a low maintenance stand at the conference? So we came up with an idea to put the learning platform in arcade machines and let people compete against each other. So instead of doing Mario or whatever, you would um, compete against each other in how fast you could solve a Kubernetes uh, cluster outage or um, how fast you could, I don't know, deploy a pod, um, et cetera. So that was a pretty cool time. And again, I've learned a lot. First of all, I learned that I love consultancy. I love being the outsider coming in with a fresh view. And maybe that's also ties back to the imposter syndrome again. I like getting in something new where I don't feel comfortable. And, and yeah, when I get the time and the trust, trust is important in this case, to actually uh, become comfortable with the whole situation and to teach people something uh, at the same time as well. I also discovered that I'm a starter. I'm less a finisher. Uh, people around me know that. Um, but I've also learned that that's OK. It's OK that people are different. If we would all be finishers, we wouldn't start new projects. If we were all starters, then probably nothing would get finished. So for me, it's now trying to yeah, figure out how I can solve this problem and how I can surround me with people who like to finish stuff. Also, one of the most important things that I've learned as a consultant is learn to say no. And I still find it fucking hard at times. Um, I am a person who wants to help others. So I'm inclined to say yes, and then at the end, maybe say no. But I've learned to be clear up front. Um, clear is kind. Brene Brown says it in her vulnerability uh, books. Um, if you are clear up front, it's kinder than coming back on your decision to do something and then withdrawing uh, from the choice. So learn to say no, it's really important. Also, if you wanna um, yeah, fulfill your ambitions, be intentional, share your ambitions, share them with your managers, share them with people around you, because otherwise uh, they will forget about you. Imagine you have a company where you have a developer who's in there from the beginning and he feels like he's the CTO, but he doesn't have the title. And someone else comes in uh, and, and is there for two years, but has the ambition to become CTO from the start. Um, guess what? The managers will probably make him CTO instead of the engineer who was there from the beginning. So if you share your ambitions, if you are intentional about it, uh, you will probably get further. Another thing that I've learned is that it's good to apply for a new job every year. I don't say switch jobs every year. I say apply. If you apply for a new job, you will get reassured that your current job is fine and that you will get new energy and uh, you will, you're still in the right place. All right, let's move on to my uh, own company. Um, first of all, my mission. Uh, my mission is to connect, inspire, and challenge the people around me. Um, it's kind of my compass to decide whether or not something is a good thing or not. Um, I'm the managing, managing director of Skyworks, which is a boutique cloud consultancy in Utrecht. And we are small and we want to stay small on purpose. Um, we want to stay personal and we want to be innovative. Um, and yeah, we just do everything around cloud. So my current role is to hire engineers, 
find them cool projects, to coach the employees, uh, do some finances as well. But also stuff like lease contracts, expenses, timesheets, organizing events. And well, I could go on a few more slides. Um, and that makes me sometimes feel like a jack of all trades and a master of none. Um, you have to do a lot of things. You have to keep a lot of, uh, you juggle with a lot of balls and that's, it's difficult, um, but it's my job. And uh, it turns out I like it a lot. And I'm learning more than ever before. Um, I've learned that I still have to satisfy my inner techie heart. So um, I tinker at home with home automation and stuff like that. I try to automate everything. Um, and, and yeah, that's, that keeps me afloat as well. But I also discovered that I need to develop a better sense of urgency, um, especially in my line of business, responding quickly, uh, acting uh, fast is really important. And um, I also need to become more structured. I'm a creative guy. I like uh, yeah, creative thinking. So I'm not that structured. And I still feel like an imposter sometimes. So I guess I'm doing pretty good. So let's move on to the key takeaways. If you forget everything about the sli slide deck or my presentation, that's fine. But I want to give you some advice. First of all, be courageous. Have courage. Try something new, but also stay curious. This is my son. He's, he loves uh, airplanes and rockets, etc. Uh, curiosity is something that leads you to new places and uh, yeah, makes you grow. Also, never stop learning. I recently acquired my Solution Architect exam, um, and that's something I still like to do. And last but not least, it's your life. Take control. Be in the driver's seat. Um, no one else is going to drive the car for you, but you have to do it. It's your life. So thank you. If you have any questions, feel free to reach me out on those uh, uh, on Twitter, LinkedIn, or by email. Um, oh, we actually got a few questions via the chat. So thank you, boss. I think a very inspiring uh, talk uh, with a uh, for me a central uh, word is learning, learning, learning from everything uh, you did. Pretty cool. Um, so let's uh, let's look at the at the chat. Uh, there's a question. Uh, indeed, really nice. So what's next? What's your ne what will be your next step? Um, well, I've also learned that the journey is a goal in itself. Um, so a few years ago, my goal was to become well to to lead a group of people, to lead a company. Um, right now, if you would ask me, well, my goal is now to grow this company and to make it a success, and maybe later on. I don't know, start another company or uh, yeah, grow in the same direction. But I just love what I'm doing right now. And I said, I still feel sometimes like an imposter. So I guess I'm still stretching. Okay. And another question coming from an autodidact background yourself. Do you look for similar employees at your own company or do you rather hire people that are more traditionally uh, uh, in terms of background? And what's your decision making process in that? Well, it's a really good question. Um, I I don't care about the background or about studies or whatever. I do care about uh, seeing the fire in someone's eyes um, and about the ability to learn and adapt. Um, I'd rather have someone who switched a lot but learned a lot about new technologies than someone who worked for 10 years uh, on something and has an academic background. Um, so it's more about personality and the ability to learn in this case as well. That's what I yeah, look for in uh, new, uh, new hires. Okay. Then a question about workload, life balance. How do we deal with that? Well, um, I try to balance that pretty strictly. Um, at 6 o'clock, I just shut off everything. Sometimes I make an exception. But I'm not the guy who's still working at 11 o'clock. Or I also have my son, I have my wife, I have my hobbies. And I also think that's a good thing. I mean, that gives me the energy to, to get through the week, through the day. Um, but sometimes, yeah, there's some crunch time involved and, and you need to stretch those hours a bit. But I, I find work-life balance really important. And that's also within our company. That's one of the main uh, things that we have in place. And then let's looking at the time, the last question. Uh, by the way, I see a lot of reactions like inspiring, inspiring, inspiring. So that's cool. Um, uh, the 
the question is how did you motivate yourself to make those first steps when feeling like an uh, imposter um well I, I just continued on doing what i felt that i could do um like organize an event yes the first time is hard and is difficult but if you just go through it that then the autodidact comes back in i just try to do it myself uh, sometimes i forget to ask for help and and i do too much at the same time um but it's just continuing and ignoring that feeling that you're you're, you're an imposter i mean everyone has a good as a opinion and yeah to vocalize that opinion that's really important and to just step up and ignore that that voice in your head that says, yes, you're not good enough because everyone is, definitely. Thank you, Bas. Thank you for uh, for being here this afternoon and, and answering all the questions. Great response.